Chris Van Cleve is with us from Washington. Chris, are you seeing any signs of improvement compared to yesterday? Well, certainly not on this block. And, you know, there, there are a number of these throughout the region where they're essentially frozen in time. A plow hasn't been through here. Um, you know, you can see the path that people have, have carved for themselves just by trudging down their block. Now, in neighboring northern Virginia, where uh, a bulk of the metro area lives, VDOT tells us about 60% of the subdivisions have passable roads. That means, you know, almost half don't. So there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, officials across the region are asking for patience, are asking for another 24 hours, but people are getting frustrated. I mean, if this is your street and that's your car that's covered under snow and surrounded by feet of snow, and we're talking 72 hours after the snow stopped, you got to wonder why you haven't even seen a plow. But let's put this into perspective, Chris. As you've been reporting, this is not an area that expects to get this much snow. I think the last time, didn't you say it was back in the 1920s? The, the, the district says you have to remember that the last time D.C. got this much snow, where we're talking two feet or more, it was 1922. The last time that D.C.'s had anything resembling this much snow on the ground was 2010, where they got hit by two blizzards within about five days. So, you know, the city just doesn't deal with all of this. And I think what the Northeast forgets is that D.C. in a lot of ways is a southern city. They get a little bit of snow, but not a lot of snow. So while they have infrastructure, this isn't Boston. They don't deal with this on a regular basis or even an annual basis. Right. So given all that, Chris, what has been the impact on the city? What are things looking like in terms of you know, federal government, in terms of schools? All right. So the federal government is closed again today, which is probably a good thing. The people that are on the roads that are coming back to work today are finding it slow going, in part because there's a lot of snow removal still going on. So the snow removal is creating traffic. Plus, uh, you, you have fewer of the lanes available. Um, schools, some will reopen tomorrow is the plan. Others uh, in some of the, the, the further out suburbs that got closer to three feet of snow likely will be closed for the rest of the week. Uh, today is going to be above freezing for an entire 24 hour period. We really haven't had that uh, since uh, last week, since before the snow started falling. And this weekend looks to be in the 40s, maybe even the 50s. So there is hope, there is progress being made, but there is a lot of work to do. Are there any um in particular concerns that the city is uh, challenging, um, that they're challenged by as they look to recover? I think the volume of snow is, is the biggest issue. It's just a matter of the resources. And I think the other thing to keep in mind, the people that have been working 12 hour shifts now since Friday, uh, you, you know, it, it is, it's taking its toll on manpower. So they're, they're looking uh, and, and actively recruiting people that can drive the big dump trucks and the front loaders and the bobcats to give people a break that have been working these marathon shifts uh, as the city tries to dig out. So manpower uh, and, of course, just uh, trying to get all of this snow off the pavement. You know, you can't plow this anymore. You've got to come in and scoop it up, put it in a dump truck, drive the dump truck to the old football stadium where they're dumping it all in a parking lot. Uh, and, and that just is time intensive. Absolutely. Chris Van Cleve for us in Washington. Thank you. Sure thing.